Hello everyone. In this particular session of the pharmacology, I will be discussing about the hematonics. Hematonics, these are the agents which are required for the formation of blood and they are used for the treatment of anemia. Right? They are required for the formation of blood. And they are used in the treatment of anemia. Right, they are used in the treatment of anemia. And what are the important hematonics? The main hematonics include iron, folic acid, and vitamin B12. Right, the main hematonics include iron. Folic acid and then vitamin B12. Right, and then vitamin B12. Now, apart from this iron, folic acid, and vitamin B12, what are the other substances? Right, what are the other substances? The other substances they include copper and pyridoxin right the other substances they include copper and pyridoxin these are also required in small quantities for the formation of blood so now first let me discuss about the iron so iron you need to know what is the daily requirement of iron in males females menstruating female pregnant female Okay, first of all, if you see the recommended dietary allowance of your iron in adult male. So, in adult male, the iron requirement per day is 1 milligram. Right? Whereas, if you take the iron requirement in a menstruating female, so, in menstruating female, there will be loss of iron in the form of the menstrual blood. So, they require little excess quantity of iron as their daily requirement that is nearly around 2 milligrams. Whereas, you see in case of pregnant female. So, in pregnant female, the daily requirement of iron is around 3 to 5 milligrams and why is that that is because in the pregnant female the fetus will be utilizing this particular iron for its growth and the formation of the rbc now you should know what are the sources of iron right what are the sources of iron the sources of iron they are like if you take the vegetarian diet it is beans and dry fruits right beans and as well as dry fruits these are the vegetarian diet where you have good amount of iron and even you take the non-vegetarian diet which contains the iron it includes liver and as well as egg yolk right liver and as well as the egg yolk and you take the other substances like milk and its products milk and its products they are poor sources of the iron now whatever the iron that is taken through the diet is absorbed across the duodenum right so what will be the site of absorption of this particular iron that is at the duodenum right this is an important multiple choice question and another important point is what is the form of iron right what is the form of iron that is absorbed across the duodenum that will be fe plus 2 right that will be Fe plus 2 right this is the form of iron which is being absorbed across the duodenum next 
you take the heme in hemoglobin like you have the heme component and as well as the globin component right your globin component is your protein whereas the heme component it contains iron in the center and as well as the porphyrin rings so the heme contains the iron in the ferrous form right so the heme it contains the iron right it contains the iron in the ferrous form and most of the inorganic iron right the iron which is present in these particular sources right most of the inorganic iron this is available as the ferric form right this is available as the ferric form that is fe plus 3 that will be the inorganic iron now this ferric form right this ferric form fe plus 3 it has to be reduced to fe plus 2 that is the ferrous form right the ferric form has to be reduced to ferrous form and it is only the ferrous form that will be absorbed across the duodenum right it is only the ferrous form that is absorbed across the duodenum so for reducing the ferric form to the ferrous form we require the reducing substances right and what are these reducing substances like ascorbic acid right and apart from ascorbic acid the other important substance is the gastric acid that is hydrochloric acid so these substances these are the reducing substances they convert the ferric form to the ferrous form and thereby you know they increase the absorption across the duodenum now on the other hand you take the substances like alkalis phosphates phytates tetracyclines they decrease the absorption of iron okay so the substances which will decrease the absorption they includes phytates then we have alkalis see you should remember that acids like gastric acid and ascorbic acid they will increase the absorption by reducing the ferric to ferrous form Whereas you take alkalis, they will reduce the absorption. Okay, so alkalis, phytates, and then phosphates, then tetracyclines, right? Then tetracyclines. These drugs they decrease the absorption. Hmm? These drugs they decrease the absorption. And after the absorption, what will happen to the iron metabolism? I will discuss now. So, before that, a short recap of this hematonics that is iron. These particular hematonics are the substances or the agents which are required for the formation of blood and for the treatment of the anemia. And the main hematonics include iron, folic acid, and as well as the vitamin B12. And other hematonics include copper and as well as the pyridoxin. And these are also required in small quantities for the formation of blood that is copper and pyridoxin. And if you take iron which is a very important hematonic, the daily requirement of iron is in adult male is 1 milligram and menstruating female is 2 milligrams, pregnant female it is 3 to 5 milligrams. And what are the important sources of iron that includes like liver, egg yolk, beans and dry fruits. These are good sources of iron. Whereas milk and its products, they are the poor sources of iron. And this particular iron is absorbed mostly in the duodenum. Right? Duodenum is the site of absorption of this iron. And across the duodenum, the iron, it is absorbed in the form of the ferrous. Right? In the ferrous form. And if you take the heme, which is present in the hemoglobin, it contains the iron in ferrous form. And most of the inorganic iron, let me tell you, that is in beans, dry fruits, liver and egg yolk, they are, it is available in the form of the ferric form. 
the ferric form will not be absorbed across the intestine. This has to be reduced to the ferrous form and for which you require the reducing substances. And these reducing substances are like ascorbic acid and as well as the gastric acid. They increase the absorption. Whereas on other hand, substances like alkalis, phosphates, phytates, tetracyclines, they decrease the absorption of iron. Now, once the iron is absorbed, what will happen to its metabolism? Let me discuss that now. So, the iron, it is absorbed across the duodenum. Right? And the form of iron which is absorbed across the duodenum is Fe plus 2. That is the ferrous form. After absorption, right, after absorption, iron can either be stored as ferritin or it is transported with transferrin to be utilized in the formation of blood. So, what is your iron? It is a hematinic, right? It is required for the formation of blood. Okay. So, this iron after absorption, right, after absorption across the duodenum, it is stored in the form of ferritin. Right, it is stored in the form of the ferritin. Right, the storage form of iron is ferritin. Or this particular iron Right, this particular iron, it is transported with transferrin. Okay, what is transferrin? It is an iron transport protein. Right, it is iron transport protein. So, this ferrous form, it is bound to the transferrin and it is utilized in the formation of blood. Right, and it is utilized in the formation of blood. So, when there is excess of iron in the body, right, when there is excess of iron in the body, it combines with the epoferritin to form ferritin. So, I said you, ferritin, it is the storage form. Right, and how is this particular ferritin formed? This excess iron, whichever is present in the body, this will combine with epoferritin right this will combine with epoferritin to form this ferritin and this ferritin it remains stored in the mucosal cells right this ferritin it is stored in the mucosal cells and it is removed from the body when these cells are shed off. Right? This particular ferritin which is stored in the mucosal cells, right? It is removed from the body whenever these cells are shed off. Right, these are removed from the body whenever these cells are shed off. Now, in case of iron deficiency, right, whenever there is iron deficiency, the number of transferrin receptors increased on the erythropoietic cells. What is your transferrin? Transferrin, it is an iron transport protein. So, in individuals with iron deficiency anemia, what happens is, consider this is the RBC, right? The shape of the RBC is like your biconcave. So, in case of iron deficiency anemia, the receptors, right, the receptors for the transferrin right, receptors for transferrin, they are increased, right, receptors for transferrin, they are increased on the erythropoietic cells. So that iron, right, so that iron, it 
selectively goes to these particular erythropoietic cells. Right, so that iron selectively goes to these particular erythropoietic cells and there will be erythropoiesis. Right, and there will be erythropoiesis. That is the compensatory mechanism that will happen in patients with the iron deficiency anemia. Right, and what is that compensatory mechanism? That is increase in the number of transferrin receptors on the erythropoietic cells. Now, this iron, right, this particular iron in iron deficiency anemia, it is used for prophylaxis or treatment of iron deficiency anemia, right, it is used as prophylaxis or for the treatment of the iron deficiency anemia right and your iron deficiency anemia it is nothing but your microcytic hypochromic anemia and this particular iron in iron deficiency anemia let me tell you it can be given through the oral route right it can be given through the oral route or the parenteral route Right, it can be given through the oral route or the parenteral route. And parenteral route, it is either through intravenous route or the intramuscular route. And this parenteral route is indicated only when oral iron is not tolerated. Right, so when will you give this parenteral route? When the oral iron if it is not tolerated right or if the oral iron if it is not absorbed right if the oral iron if it is not absorbed in such case you give this parenteral iron but please remember this point rate of hematopoiesis or rate of hematopoietic response with parenteral iron is not faster than that with optimal doses of the oral iron therapy, right? Why are we just giving intravenously or intramuscularly? Only when the oral iron, if the individual cannot tolerate, because this oral iron, it can cause severe gastritis. So when the oral iron is not tolerated or not absorbed across the duodenum, then we give this parenteral iron. But Please remember the rate of hematopoietic response with parenteral iron is not faster than that with optimal doses of the oral iron. Now, let me tell you what are the oral preparations and what are the parenteral preparations of the iron. So, before that, a short recap. So, I have discussed about the iron metabolism. After the absorption, iron can be either stored as ferritin or it is transported with transferrin to be utilized in the formation of blood. And when there is excess of iron in the body, it combines with apoferritin to form ferritin, right, to form the ferritin, which remains stored in the mucosal blood and it is removed from the body when these cells are shed. And in case of iron deficiency, number of transferrin receptors increase on erythropoietic cells. So, iron selectively goes to these particular cells resulting in the brisk erythropoiesis right resulting in brisk erythropoiesis and iron is used for prophylaxis or treatment of iron deficiency anemia right and prophylaxis mainly where do we use in pregnant females we give this prophylactic iron and this iron it can be given by oral or the parenteral route the parenteral route is intravenous or intramuscular it is indicated only Right, it is indicated only when the oral iron is not tolerated or not absorbed, right? And this point is important that is, rate of hematopoietic response with parenteral iron is not faster than that with optimal doses of the oral iron therapy. Now, let me tell you what are the oral preparations and what are the parenteral formulations.